and welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're taking another trip. Today we're going to Fort William in Scotland and we're going to explore the Highlands. This was among one of my favorite parts. Start over. Welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're going to Fort William, Scotland and we're going to travel around the Highlands of Scotland and visit some ancient and mysterious and beautiful places. I really hope you enjoy this episode. This was a very special part of the trip that we took. And since we're here, we're talking about Scotland, I have some book recommendations. Imagine that. So this is really fun. Um, you'll see these books if you get to Scotland or if you can't get to Scotland and, and you would like to read them. These are available on Amazon. The first is Scottish Folk Tales. And this is exactly what the title implies. It goes into the ancient lore, lore and legend of Scotland. And as a companion volume, Scottish, Scottish Myths and Legends. So these two books give you a lot of the mystical and historical background on the folk tales and so forth relating to Scotland. They're both published by Lomond, L-O-M-O-N-D, uh, and easily found and available. These are really great books. And finally, another one, Scottish Ghosts, which is Ghouls, Ghosts, and Beasties. Now this collection is also published by Lomond, and this is um, a collection of short stories, supernatural so short stories um, set in Scotland or with a Scottish theme, and they're excellent. There's some really, really interesting and rare fiction you'll find in this collection. Highly recommended. So get your hands on these three books, Scottish Ghosts, Scottish Myths and Legends, and finally Scottish Folk Tales. So I hope if you're quite ready, take a look at this little video that I put together uh, about Fort William and the Mystical Highlands. And I wish you well in your journey. And now, if you're quite ready, let's begin. Fort William is located on the eastern shore of Loch Lanay. It's a small but quaint town with excellent pubs and extremely friendly people. Soon, we set out with our guide, Peter McGillivray's and began exploring the highlands. These brief clips are but a fraction of our explorations, but I hope the scenery inspires you in your travels. What's the name of this lock again? McLoin. McLoin. Mm hmm. We're high up in the top of now. Let's sit back a moment or two and simply enjoy the scenery on the way to Glencoe and Eileen Donan Castle. The whole trio in Sky was built by him, the Scots engineer. You don't know, count the castles, but you have to come out. Look at the colors there, they're great. Beautiful.
St. Donan followed in his footsteps and came over to Scotland, to the west coast. He came into what we call Loch Dua, where Ellen Donan sits. Sits on an island. But the issue behind me here. Yeah, you see, you can see all the way, oh, you know, from back coming. there, right, right to the corner, but even at that, still, still, I'm, I'm still taking a chance. Yeah. You know, somebody could pull out the map and by now. St. Donan, and he builds the first structure on the island, a wooden stone affair, you know, as a small church, a small cell, as we call it. Um, it's hard to know how long that would have lasted, um, 20, 30 years, maybe. But if you jump forward again to, say, the 9th century, the time of the Vikings, when they invaded the north and down the west coast and took control of the area there, they stayed here until the early 1300s. But in the 1200s, King Alexander II, you had King Alexander I, he died. King Alexander II started to take control of the lands back again in this area and he built the first garrison peak uh, type castle on the island. He died, King Alexander III continued the process. He built onto the castle and he also raised the clans, took the clans together to um, to get rid of this invader, to get rid of these Norsemen, these Vikings, and to take the lands back, which he completed. He did that after a large battle. And so, King Alexander II dies. The area is taken over by Clan Mackenzie, and the fortification is taken over by the castle. They stay in the castle until about 1530 when Clan McCree becomes the hereditary keepers of the castle. Whether there was money exchanged between them, who knows? It's probably in the history book somewhere uh, that will tell you it was or it wasn't. But either way, Clan McCree becomes the dominant clan. Clan Mackenzie moves further out to the coast and further up the west coast in new clan lands for them. Clan McRae stays in the castle until the Second Rebellion. Roughly around about 1715, the clans start to rebel against their English counterparts. And in 1719, it comes to a head when a thousand Jacobites come out of Ellen Donan and head to Inverness to take Inverness for them. For the, for the rebellion. But as they're coming through Glen Shield, which is up ahead of us here, they meet another government force coming towards to take Ellen Donner Castle. So the two forces meet at the narrowest point in Glen Shield. We'll be going in there very shortly. Battle commences. In amongst the Highland Jacobites, there's 300 Spanish Jacobites supporting the cause because 
throughout the day. In the meantime, Ellen Donner Castle has got 30 to 40 Spanish Jacobite troops defending it. But not quite enough for the three government warships that sail into Lord Dewey. They bombard the castle with cannonballs, but it's having no effect whatsoever. The cannonballs are just bouncing off the walls. The walls will be 10 feet thick, so it's not going to have any impact. So they decide to land a large land-based raiding party, and they eventually get into the castle, these government troops, only to find in the dungeons of the armory that they're stacked from the, from the floor to the ceiling with gunpowder, dynamite, <laughs> arms, etc, etc. So, what do you do with it? You take what you can and destroy the castle. And this is what they did. They blew the castle. But it didn't destroy it completely. There was still parts of the walls, etc. Still there. Of course, the Spanish troops surrendered. And when word got to the battle that was going on in Glen Shield, the battle stopped, disintegrated. No, no reserves, no supplies um, were to be had, you know, for the Jacobite troops. So they took to the hills to fight another day. And the poor 300 Spanish had to surrender uh, to the government troops. They were treated, hey ho, as prisoners of war, which wouldn't have been very good. But better to still be alive if it was Jacobite, Highland Jacobites. They would have put them up against a wall and shot them, or bayoneted them, you know, whatever. Um, and so these Jacobites lived to fight another day. The Battle of Glen Shield had gone, finished, um, and Ellen Donnan lay in ruins. This was 1719. The rebellion of that time more or less died a death after that. Until 1910, yes, you had the 1745 rebellion, but it really had no effect, you know, on Helen Donna at that stage because it was a ruin. But so in 1910, many years later, a Colonel John McRae decided he wanted to buy Helen Donna and rebuild it. It took them 20 years to rebuild it to what you will see today. They still own it. still own the castle today, yes. It's a money spinner. Okay. It's a gold mine. Oh, sure it is. They've got the, the big cafe, the restaurant, um, the gift shop. They've actually, they're actually building an extension out the sort of front side of it. To me, it's a bit of an eyesore. Uh, I, I wouldn't have done it yeah, that way. Changed it, yeah. Um, because there was pines. Uh, as soon as you come out the door, you're looking at the castle, you're looking at the bridge over to it, and you've got these pines which add to the effect, the overall effect of. They've taken them away, and they're building a new, it's like a, 
is that a new ticket office and a fast food outlet. Because what it has to do is take the pressure off the meat cafe and restaurant because it's just, they can't cope. Right. You know, there's too many visitors there. This is Glideshill. Eileen Donan Castle sits on a small island where three locks meet. Loch Duick, Loch Long, and Loch Alsh. The view is breathtaking. Eileen Donan Castle is the most photographed castle in Scotland, and Errol Flynn fans will recall the stunning aerial shot used in the opening sequence of the 1953 film, The Master of Ballantrae. I hope you've enjoyed riding along with us, sitting back, and just taking in all of the magnificent scenery of Scotland. Perhaps one day I'll share tales of our visit to the Isle of Skye, but for now, it's time to warm ourselves with a pint and sit back with contentment as we plan our next adventure. Cheers! Cheers.